The Al Bumble podcast is sponsored by Landfill from the Far East that you order off the internet. Supported by this former footballer. I heartily endorse this product or service. There you go. Okay. I've got some sponsorship for us. Lovely. Just what we wanted. Yeah. And you know what? By the time this goes out, football will be really topical. Yes, it will. Because... It will have that, happened. That team will have won that thing. Yes, well done, you. Yeah, and we'll be ready to start all over again. Very soon. Yes. Anyway, hello, everybody. Hello. Welcome to Al Bumble, the safe space where we review albums we didn't get round to reviewing the first time. Are you sure you want to bring me into a safe space? Well, yeah, we, we, this is our safe space to okay. do these. Honey. I'm Anne. I'm still not. Uh, and that's the running joke. Yes. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, I'm guessing by about episode 190, it's going to start getting funny. Yeah. <laughs> and if I forget to do it one episode, we'll have a queue of people outside the back door going, Oh, excuse me, I believe that the podcast you released last <laughs> week didn't have the bit of cocking around at the start that you normally do. I only listen to it for that joke. Yes. There we go. But if you listen to it for that joke, hopefully you listen to it a bit longer and listen to everything. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, still, it still counts as a download. Yeah, It'll do, yeah I guess it yeah. does. Um, right. So it was my week this week. It was. Um, well, not this week because it's every two weeks, isn't it? It's your turn this episode. Yes. Um, so I asked you to review... Who Killed the Zootons? By the Zootons. By the Zootons. Um, so sh- do we need to have any spiel or anything? Or do we want to just go... I think we can say it's their 2004 debut long player. Yes. Um, it had a surprisingly large number of singles from it. And yes. also a couple of singles released which weren't on the album. We, well, uh, th- actually, that brings me on to something... Um, that maybe I should have brought up uh, before. Right. Which version of the album did you listen to? Right. I listened to the 13-track version. Right. With Don't Ever Think on the end. Yes, because that's the one that I bought. Yeah. So that's the one that I've reviewed. Yes, which is the second edition yes. of it. So, yeah, that's good. So, yes. Um, we, we might want to talk about... Well, obviously, we'll talk about that edition yeah. at the end. Yeah. Right, shall we um, go into, do a deep delve? Shall we have a, a mosey dive? on through? <laughs> okay. We'll get shall on we the, uh, uh, mince through? We'll get on the action slacks and peruse <laughs> over here. Thanks, Alan. Right, we're going to start off uh, un- unsurprisingly with track one, which is called Zuton Fever. Yeah. Uh, starts off with a very strong uh, guitar intro, mm-hmm. uh, which kind of sets the tone, really, for the rest of the album. The kind of lyrical guitar, um, the strong stamp of kind of... I, wouldn't, I don't want to say Mersey Beat and Beatlesy, but it does... It's an evolution of that yes. sound, isn't it? Yeah, you can kind of imagine them being the dirty cavern club. Yeah. But obviously, because it's, now... it's I'll, I'll talk about the production a bit later on. Yeah. But the production on this is very clean. Yes. There are, there are very few gimmicks and things no. going on in this. And you hear the, a level of musicianship yes. in this, which I don't think a lot of their... Uh, Everything is quite. Um, I wouldn't use the word clean, but I'd use. I'd say everything is very clear. Yeah. Like it's being played live. Yes. Rather than being pr- produced and mished and mashed and uh, compressed, everything feels quite. It, when it when it needs to be twangy, it's very twangy. Yes. And when it needs yeah. to be quite acoustic and. Low, you can still hear it, yeah, but it's not kind of low in the mix, no, if you know what I mean. Um, I feel, uh, also interestingly, this that one of the things the Zootons I always think of with the Zootons 
is the fact that they have a sax player. Yes. And sax as an indie instrument... It's quite is, unusual. It's quite unusual. Yeah. Um, I would say sometimes the sax works. Sometimes, I, w- I don't want to say it doesn't work, but sometimes it just feels a bit like, oh, I wasn't expecting that quite there. Yeah. Um, there was um, a parallel that I drew a bit later on, um, which I'll, I'll say as you've mentioned that now, yeah. which is... Um, There were a few bands about 10 years before this, or 12, 14 years before this. Um, The one that came to mind was the Bridewell Taxes, Mm -hmm. who quite often had um, brass in what was otherwise relatively root one indie. And I think it it gave it a a, a good sound. Yes. It did kind of set... Talking about the Zootons, it was an instrument that set them slightly apart yes because you could when they had tracks on that had the sax yeah it was very noticeable yes um i really like the intro to yes. this song as well because yes it 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 sets the scene very quickly as this is something that is going to be at times a bit discordant a bit left field, yes. and is going to take some some odd dives yes. off Somewhere you're not expecting them. Yes. So I, I thoroughly approve yeah, of that. It's, it is definitely a very good opener. Yes. Isn't it? Yeah. Um, so this then moves on to one of their singles, mm-hmm. which is uh, Pressure Point. And a second song on the subject of curing disease and... Yes. Uh, and, and that sort of whole... Yes. Uh, I don't want to say medical because it's obviously not a medical. Yeah, it could reference. be it could idiom. Of yes, yeah. Curing something, but maybe it's not a a thing. It might be a a person or a society. Yeah. Or a a thing. But I, I thought this was quite a timeless track. It it doesn't have anything in there which particularly ties it to the the era it was no, released in. I, I think part of that is. Um, I'd say there's quite a good use of percussion. Yeah. And um it's quite it, it's not minimal, but no. everything is when it's used is used for a, a purpose. Yeah. And it builds up very well too. Yes. Um so yes, it, yeah. This is one of a couple of songs on the album that I wouldn't have been able to sing you from the title. No, but then as soon as I started yeah. listening to it, it's, oh, it's that song. It's that song, yeah. Um, so, yeah, I was uh, quite pleased to, to, to recognise it a yeah. bit as it uh, as it went through. Track three. So that's another al- yes. and another single. You will, you won't. You will, you will, you will. No, you won't. <laughs> you- <laughs> um, uh, again... Uh, what 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 I've put here is I've said uh, this is a going back to the kind of Mersey Beat thing, yeah. but much more mysterious. Mersey Beat was generally quite major, yeah. Whilst this album is a bit more mysterious, a yeah. bit more. I don't want to say Halloweeny, like uh, you know, um, Halloween, Halloween maybe, yeah. Um, but it it does have that kind of jangliness. Yeah. Uh, but is is quite mysterious. I'd also say that this was probably the track where I realised that the throughout this album the text is particularly uh, syllabic. Right, okay. Where, you know, like, uh, it's not, I don't don't want to say it's not tuneful, but it's like, it's more to a beat. Yeah. Than, you know, uh, am I making sense? Yeah, it's, I I think what you're you're saying is it's more poetry than it is. It's more being performed as a a complete piece, which sounds more poetic than it does musical. Yes. At times. Um. Yes. See, I think this is another song with a 
supremely strong intro. Yes. Um, the whole structure of the song feels more like a jazz song to me yeah. than an indie record. And it, something I was noticing all the way through this, I'd possibly been expect. I don't think I've ever listened to this album all the way through. Oh, and I was good. possibly expecting something a bit more Route 1 indie, because that was mm-hmm. very much the scene yes. that they were a part of in the early 2000s. Um, this really sounds to me that this has been honed and worked out when they've been playing it live. Yeah. Because you listen to this and you could imagine being in a room when the first few yeah. beats of that kick in. Yeah. And everybody who knows it will be going mad. Yes. Because it's They'll a... be joining in. Yeah, yeah. It does have... This song in particular does have um, football chant yeah. a bit about it, doesn't it? Yeah. Especially in the that main you yes. will, you won't yeah. um, refrain to it. And then Dave goes off and does some mad vocals <laughs> yeah. on it as well, which I, I really like as well. Yeah. Um, Track four and another single. Uh, yes. Confusion. Now, yes. Um, this is very different. Mm-hmm. The 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 um it goes slow it comes down a bit yeah um a kind of acoustic kind of singer songwriter type start yeah um slight country tones again you see I was <laughs> trying not to write the words country yeah, or but it, western or americana yeah but they kept coming up all yeah. the way through this and again is that I think it's that twangy guitar yeah as well uh that 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 kind of it's that sound tinny, isn't it? yeah yes which I get I guess does go back to the Mersey beat before that skiffle yeah oh, that's another know? word I've used later yeah, on as so well I guess it all has kind of progressed these veins almost of yeah kind of come into this heart yeah um whether that's subliminal or they've on put you know it's just things that they've picked up yeah um but, but it is nice to see that they've got a different side to them yes i mean they i mean we've said this with other albums you can't just have Banger after banger after no, because otherwise major, it runs out of steam. Yeah, yeah. it just becomes samey. Yeah, um, and actually, after the first few songs that have been quite punchy, yeah, you need something that's a bit different. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, as we're talking about the third single in four tracks, yes, I will just say that. I really love the artwork for this album and the singles yes. that came off it. Obviously, all designed with a theme in mind, yes. and sort of this this noir horror comic cell yes. design with a small color palette. Yes, and everything has three or four colors. Yes, on it. I would say um, that the artwork in particular is, for me, very much inspired by the film. Yellow Submarine. Yeah, I can see but that. But on a much smaller budget. Yeah. <laughs> and colour palette. Yes. Um, one of one of the songs, in, um, I can't remember which one, has got a video. Yeah. Which is ve- it, which it looks very like something from Yellow Submarine. Oh right, okay. But with very few colours. Yeah. Almost like the artwork on the album, but yeah kind of more v- movement yeah um but yes i agree yeah this was another one that i wouldn't be able to sing you from the no. title but once i heard it it was oh it's that song yeah so it's uh yeah another case of that going on on to track five havana gang brawl okay so um if you've never heard this song before you will have never heard it because it's just an album track I think that, that that's doing it sure. Yeah. <laughs> this um, was probably one of the ones I found I I enjoyed the most yes. because it's uh, I think it's a great tune. Um, I did wonder. Uh, I obviously didn't get this at the time. Whether this is I, I take it this is a pun. It's not Havana night brawl. It's a <laughs> Havana Havana night 
like I'm having a what like Kavana? No, like a I'm Kavana gang ha- brawl. Ha- having a night brawl. Yes, yeah, I yeah, think you're probably like, right. Yeah. Um, so it, it kind of seemed to be the whole thing seemed to be an idiom of scousers having a night out, having a punch up. <laughs> <laughs> again, again, lots of Americana touchstones. Yes, yes. I've, I've put here, it's a mishmash of cultural references. Yep. And the, the words I came up to describe it were Latin skiffle. Yes, there was a bit of a Latin... I, d- I don't want to say um, quite Eastern European. That kind of... Um, you know, the, the bra- brassy... Yeah, instrument yeah. Umpa yeah. type... Yeah. Um. Fr- fr- well, not frenetic, but kind yeah. of energy. Yeah. To it. This is another one that I thought sounds as though it's been honed a lot oh, playing yeah. it live. Yeah. And I quite like to hear a live version of it because mm? I think that would have a yeah. lot more energy to it. Yeah. Uh, the other thing I noticed was the line "Where will you sleep tonight?" That that really reminded me a lot of um, Amy McDonald's "This Is Ooh, the Life." Yeah. Which came about three years later. Oh, maybe and she was inspired. I think there might have been an oh. influence there. Oh, um, but uh, well, you know, maybe you should ask her. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, right, should we go on to the next one? Yes, railroad. Railroad, another country. I think twangy guitar. Yeah. Um, although halfway through the pentatonic Chinese scale. Started coming in. Oh, did it? Yes, it did. Oh. Um, with the I, kind I will, of... I will, I will sit yeah. here, I will nod safely. If you listen I will... to it again, it sounds will... like they've been Pre- in Chinatown. I'll pretend I know what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah. It was um, that, that um, there's a sort of... Dang, 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 yeah. Dang, 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 so that's... Sort of twangy... Um, I don't know, steel guitar, is I that? I think so. Or, or, but that sort of... That's what I was saying. It keeps it, although the song isn't slow paced, because it's got that slightly lazy twanging yeah. going on in the background, that always makes it sound like a sort of a uh, small town in an expansive landscape yeah. sort of thing with the uh, with the uh, tumbleweed blowing yeah. through. And then you've got the kind of chanting ending. Makes yes. them sound like they are literally on a railroad. Actually, they're not on a railroad. They're building the rain ro- railroad yeah. in their orange overalls, yeah. <laughs> uh, singing it along as them, you know, being yeah uh, punished <laughs> um, <laughs> on the chain gang on the chain gang right, rather okay. than the railroad. Right on to number seven. Long time coming. This was the one where the. Uh, the sax in the intro yes. made me think of, in, in particular, Spirit by Bridewell Taxes. Oh, yeah. Um, and the song, I, I quite like the fact that the song then veers off in a different direction. Yes, it and, does. Uh, um, I listened to this and the first thing I thought of was um, this slightly goes back to Zooton Fever, yeah. but then also ha- seems to me in the construction or the tune sounds a bit like um whole lot of love all right by um led zeppelin or whoever did it on top of the pops the other week Uh, which is probably what which is probably what made me think of it because it's got like that yeah um i don't want to say disco feel to it but it had a kind of more of a beat yeah to it although thankfully without the pearl and dean cheese no I really liked the um, the sort of confrontational riff that comes up in the chorus. Mm-hmm. Yes, um, yes. And I also liked the quite sudden full stop ending. Yes. Um, th- there are a lot of good ideas in this song packed into about two and a half minutes. Yeah. Which I I really like because it's, it's something that's really creative. It, it explodes and then it's gone. gone. It's, it's like a firework of a song. After that comes... Uh, Nightmare Part 2. Mm-hmm. Whatever happened to Part 1, I don't know. Well, I can tell you. Yeah. It was the B-side to the You Will, You Won't 7-inch yeah. picture disc single. Ooh, ooh, very... But it was only released on that. Oh. So. so if you know what happened in Part 1... Yeah. <laughs> 
Um, tell us before but, the adverts start. But we, for... but we can tell you about part two. Yes. Um, so this, to me, and I, I, again, I, I said this in a previous review, and I don't mean this as a slight, this could easily have just been an instrumental. And that yeah. would have been enough. Yeah. Um, the 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 percussion and the uh, twangy guitars, it would just that you know just in itself would have been yeah enough. Um, I also would like to see this as a Halloween quick step on Strictly because <laughs> I think this would be great. Yeah. Um, and uh, I don't know what uh, it sounded like a bit like a a twangy mouth marimba um, at, at the very end. Yeah. Like, like the twang, long, 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 like, yeah. uh, I don't know what instrument that was, but that was very um, kind of, again, gave you a slightly unnerving quality. Yeah. Um, See, I think this plays quite well as a follow-on to Long Time Coming. Yeah. And I think the two work as two parts of a whole. Mm. Um, and it, it does feel as though, when they're played live, that those two songs would almost run into each yeah. other. Or would you'd come to the, the bang end of Long, t- long Time Coming and then go straight yeah. into this one. Yeah. Because the two do fit together thematically mm. very well. Not a lot to do. Yes, uh, another change of pace. This time going into a three four waltz, right. slower, um, slightly cabaret jazz feel. I almost feel like um, one of them's gonna come on with a clue to uh, to Ted Rogers <laughs> and and uh, give them a clue about something that you know ends up being a dinner set or something when i whenever i hear something now that has this sort of (laughs) slightly loungy sound to it i'm just relieved that i don't hear alex turner coming in with his smart arse (laughs) vocals because nothing in this in this life is is more irritating than the last two arctic monkeys albums um so yeah that was that was pretty much it's it's got this sort of Almost meandering, loungy sounds yeah. to it, but uh, yeah, I, I, I didn't mind it, but no. it's not my favourite. No, he's he's got the the voice is much softer. Yeah, he's not shouting. No, um, and there's some nice violins. Yeah, um, that come in that just kind of permeate the space. I don't know if they're there on. You can hear them. Yeah, I don't know if they're just. That's because. They're not uh, on any other song, or because they're just not forefront. Um, no. Yeah, just a just a, and again, it's a bit of a lull because uh, you know you've got to have some. End yes. Flow. Oh yeah, yeah. That brings us on to our next single from the yeah. album, track ten. Remember me. What did you think? Um. It's the first song that has directly reminded me of one of their peers. Which is? Uh, and it sounds like the choral. Yeah. Which, to be honest, isn't overly surprising. They are from the same scene, from yeah. Merseyside in the early 2000s. Yeah. Both of their debut albums were produced by Ian Brody. Yeah. Um, and they're on the same record label. Yes. So <laughs> it's not overly a big surprise, yes. is it? Um, um I'm not, I wasn't familiar with this. I know it was a single. It was a single. Um, it doesn't help that the name of the song, a lot of people know it as um, "Let the, um, Keep the Feeling In. Yeah. But that's not actually what it's called. No. Um, but yes, this is a... I, I said it starts off a bit Boo Radley's. Okay. Um, and then goes um, again... Slightly country, yeah, uh, ever so slightly, um, and I've, uh, as I said here, that very Beatlesy video, quite jangly, quite a major song. Yeah, so all uh, the other the other songs are quite more mysterious. Yeah, a bit more kind of uh, introverted. This one's a little bit more happy and yeah, kind of outward. I did think it would be very easy to rearrange this song 
to give it a very different sound and intention. Yeah. Because if you, when I was listening to it, I was thinking, now if that was being played more aggressively or was louder in the mix, yeah. then that would come across as being far more threatening. I think it's been um, <clears throat> produced and put together in a fairly easygoing yeah. and chilled out way intentionally. Mm-hmm. So, on to track 11, Dirty Dance Hall. Dirty Dance Hall. So, um, I always think this song sounds quite musical theatre. Yeah. The the beginning is quite kind of theatrical and a bit more kind of um outward well, I don't mean I don't know I don't know what I mean by that. Kind of um it's more showy possibly yeah. is what I mean. Um But that's that's an influence that they've demonstrated recurrently through yes. their their career. Because I think was it um Always right behind you. They had the West Side Story video oh, I can't remember. to it. Off there, it was the lead single off their third album, mm. I believe, and had sort of proper this this sort of proper. Is it Jets and Sharks? Yes, Jets and Sharks video to it with them all sort of doing the full musical theatre yeah. thing on that. Um, so yeah, it's yeah. it's one of those influences that's always been in their bag. Yeah, um, and it to me this kind of is a veiled song although not very veiled about another kind of nights out yeah um especially when they go about um being in a city of culture which obviously a few years later liverpool was the european city of culture yes in 2008 which they probably knew about by this time because they always um award these things many years in advance Yes, it must have been announced by them. Yes. I would have thought, so. um, oh, I, I did fit. If I had a, a, a criticism, I would say this song is possibly the one song I felt was a tad too long. Um, that seems reasonable. Yeah, um, and it also reminded me of um, a pencil full of lead oh, by right, Paolo okay. Nettini. Yeah. In, kind of the. Oh, I don't mean the structure, but the kind of, um, I don't know what I mean, actually. I've written that down and now I can't remember what oh, I heard okay. about. <laughs> Not to worry. Um, so the original final track on yeah. the album, on its first release, was Moons and Horror Shows, which I thought was quite an odd ending yes. for an album. It's quite anticlimactic yes. and lyrically reflective. Um, and the the soundscape just sort of wanders along to a finish rather than sort of yeah. firing up to a, a, a climax. Yeah, although there are some... It is nice that he's singing with um, the female yeah. in a kind of harmony. Yeah. Um, unless that was like, well, yeah, we are now in harmony. Yeah, kind of like that's maybe that was the ending. Yeah, perhaps. Maybe yeah. everything has been questioning and fighting, and now we have a little bit of peace and harmony. Maybe. Yeah, I don't know if there's supposed to be a full story arc. No, to it I don't. I don't know. Uh... But maybe we we never did find out who killed the Zootons. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then uh, we have track thirteen. Yes. Which is the other well. I say the other album, the, the, oh, the other song, uh, the other single, yeah, which is actually their best charting single, yeah. Ironically, um, was a song that wasn't actually on the album, yeah. Um, which is "Don't Ever Think," yeah, too much. Which of course was the only, um, yes, <laughs> single that Ian Brody didn't produce, yes. And boy, <clears throat> can't you tell? You can absolutely tell because. Quite a lot of the time when you get to bonus tracks or, or late edition tracks to an album, yeah. they still fit into the overall theme. This sticks out on the end yes. of it um, and is clearly... I don't know, I'd, I'd like to say it's it's from a different... It feels as though it's from a different piece of work. Yeah, the, 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 all the things we said about the sharpness of the music yeah. and the 
guitars being twangy and the percussion. This is quite mushy. Yeah. Everything is very together. Yeah. Um, and the sax in particular has a very much more prominent yeah. role in the um, the 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 uh, uh, I don't want to say almost the bass line the sax the sax line yeah almost um, the beat yeah um, I mean that's not to say it's a bad song it is I, oh, yeah, I do yeah, like yeah. it as a song yeah it just feels like a a bit out of place on the album. Yeah, there's like an extra thumb, yeah, an extra toe, yeah, that's been added to the. Because there were a couple of singles which were released earlier on, which were not part of the album. Mm-hmm. So, uh, "Devil's Deal" was their debut single, um, and we had "Creeping and a Crawling." Oh, and oh, also I... "Haunts Me" as well. Um, which were all released 2002, 2003, um, before they they uh, decided on on the on the, uh, on the, album. the full album. Yeah. Yes. So mm. it's something I always find quite interesting is when you get a band who get to the point of releasing their first full length album, and particularly for bands who haven't done EPs in the run up yeah. to it. To then go and miss out some of the songs that have been sort of your your biggest calling cards mm-hmm. up until that point, yeah. I've always thought is a quite a strange thing to do. And it still goes on today. There yeah. are still indie bands today releasing albums which um, I think miss out some of their, their obvious selling points. Yeah, it does make you wonder if they had a thread or a story or a point that they wanted to get across yeah in the way that this album is um sectioned yeah that they just thought these songs don't quite fit in yeah i i think it it possibly is that sort of approach to it but uh i i just think it's it feels a bit strange when some people are Releasing albums, I don't think, with their 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 best material yeah. on there. But, uh, yeah. Anyway, right. that brings us to the end of the track by track. So now you've heard the whole album, what did you think of it? I found it an enjoyable experience. Good. Um, and it's probably something that I will revisit at some point and go back to again. Because it's it's a good... Uh, well themed collection yes um and it's it's something that has a a good strong theme running all the way through it which yeah. i i really enjoyed good. yeah um i have to say um there were a lot of tracks during that album that i had just forgotten about um just because Let's be honest about it. There's certain songs by the Zootons people yeah. play. Yeah. And also they've been va- valeried out yes. of the... Uh, whether it's their version yeah. or the um, Amy Mark Winehouse version. Yeah. version. Um, I, 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 and I think th- this album did get a lot of love oh, at the did. time. Yeah. It got a lot of... And then it's apparently it's, in the top one hundred for a year. Yes, which is is still impressive still, yeah. going. Yeah, um, but seem to the second it, it kind of I don't want to say it went downhill, but they had a bit of a hurrah, and then it seems like things have just been slightly forgotten. Yeah, I think their their second album was possibly overshadowed a little bit by the success of Valerie once yes. it was re-recorded by Ronson and yes. Winehouse, branches throughout the South West. Yeah. Um, I think they were... Um, I think they were a little bit unfairly treated with their third album. Yeah. Because I have listened to that one and, and I do enjoy that album and I think there's... 
there's a lot of invention, a lot of ideas on there. I think the problem was by then, uh, the world had moved on a bit and there yeah. was a lot of uh, lethargy towards mm-hmm. actually promoting indie records yeah. properly. Um, yeah. I thought it was actually interesting earlier you brought up uh, the C word, the coral. Yeah. Um, because having read some reviews and reading some synopsises, synopsi? Synopsis? Synopses. Synopses of reviews. Yeah. It seems as though um, the Zootons in particular were forever compared in reviews to the coral. Like reviews would say, this is like the coral, but not this enough. Or yeah. they like the coral, but they're too much this. Yeah. Rather than going, can't you can't you just review them as the Zootons? Yeah. Yes, we know that they've got. They're in the same. They're in the same Venn diagram as the in, coral. In, in fairness, they're in a lot of Venn diagrams yes. with the coral. But, I mean, Scouse Band signed to Delta Sonic, produced by Ian Brody, in the early noughties releasing a debut album it, it's quite a big it's quite a but big... to to just compare them oh yeah yeah to yeah one band yeah it's it's not fair to be dismissive like that. no um, um but i can understand why the comparison was made yes it was to be honest it was only that one track uh remember me yes that really screamed at me this sounds like it could yes. have been a choral song um, which I don't know. Perhaps if that hadn't been released as a single, then perhaps the mm. parallel wouldn't have been no. drawn quite so much. No. Um, but yeah, I, I obviously the um, the um, it, the Skelly Brothers is it in the Coral? I, know I think so. Yeah, I know, I know there's at least one Skelly in there. James James Skelly, and I think there's an Ian. I want to say as well. Obviously, I mean the Coral and and their various offshoot bands. Yeah. Have gone on to do a humongous yeah. amount of work over the past twenty odd mm. years. Not only as their own bands, but producing for others yeah. as well, and um, and having a, a huge influence on the cultural scene of the Northwest yeah. as well. So um, yeah, I, I think there's there's more than enough room in the world for both of yeah. them. And of course, the Zootons um, have released a new single this year, "Creeping on the Dance Floor." Which is mm. brilliant, Yay. and is is great because it they come back with a single that sounds properly like a good Zooton single. Yeah. It's not like sort of a half-assed. Oh, we thought we'd come back single, <laughs> and or we're going to change our sound completely. And yeah. do so they've come back with a really good punchy radio pop song. Um, which should have been top ten for months, but of yeah, course, of course no. because of the special way that charts are rigged these days, <laughs> um, they don't. So yeah, so get, go and listen to more Zootons, maybe a bit of the Coral. Yeah, maybe some Lightning Seeds. Yeah, um, if you're going to listen to the Lightning Seeds, go and listen to the album Tilt because I think it's one of the best albums ever recorded, and it's the one that. Um, Ian Brody got upset about when it wasn't as successful as it should have been, and it's why Lightning Seeds went away for about ten years. Oh, and then came back to Yolanda's Banjam. And then came yeah. back, yeah. But um, yeah, I absolutely love that album, um, and perhaps we should do that at some point. Yes, but we possibly, can do. possibly not quite. Yeah, <laughs> quite we, so. Uh, no, quite so. Uh, tangentially related yes. to this one. So, should we find out where we're going next? Yes. So then, having been to Sheffield, Antwerp and Merseyside, Merseyside. for our first three albums... Where, um, where, which, uh, which tropical paradise <laughs> are we off to next? I think we'll head off to Essex and Berkshire. Okay. Oh, this has got you confused, hasn't it? Okay. Um, I'm going to suggest our uh, fourth, next focus. Fourth, will Your fourth, fourth, yeah. Uh, I'll bumble number four, will be Angles by Dan Lasak and Scroobius Pitt. Oh, right, okay. Um, which is a... It's a British hip-hop album. Okay. From, 
I don't want to look up how long ago this was because this is going to make me feel as Very old, old as the time. sea. Um, there we are. Angles. What does Discog say? It says 2008. Okay. So 16 years yeah. ago. Okay. And is this available on the Spotify's and the it uh, um, and the I'm sure it will be just uh, the titles and the tidal tidal oh, nobody or, ever used um, tidal on the uh, Deezer or <laughs> or um Napster um. or um um you uh, on um uh, uh Lime Wire uh um Friends Reunited Friends. <laughs> uh yes it is on Spotify so um, if nowhere else, you can find a copy there. Yep. Or it um, might be on somebody's shelf if they're listening to it. I, do they do CD copies of this? Oh, God, yeah. Or, uh, I've got a copy on vinyl, okay. I think. Oh. I'm sure I have. Yes, because the vinyl had a CD in with it as well. Okay. It was, it was the, the best way to ever release an album. Was you it release everything? it on LP with a CD in yeah. there as well, because the CDs cost pennies to make. Yeah. So you... Uh, and released on... Rob DeBank's Sunday Best style uh, uh, label. Right. Which. Uh, so um, we will go and listen to that. Yes. And. Oh, it's um, also. There's also a, a complete playback on YouTube by the look of it oh, as well. So, all right. Yeah. Um, so we will be back. We will. In a couple of weeks. Yep. Um, just to remind you that we are on. Well, we're, we're almost everywhere now. Yep. We're on. Spotify. We've got cards in phone boxes. YouTube. We can do postcards. Audible. Uh, we stand outside your window and shout. Uh, we're on Amazon Music. Oh God, I've got to come up with another one now. Uh, and other things. We are. Um, we come out the back end of Dan Norris's dog. <laughs> um, that might be Dan Norris MP by the time this comes out. Let's, in the nicest possible way. I do hope not. Not oh, that I oh. don't want it to be Jacob Rees-Mogg either. I'd rather it wasn't either of them. Well, I mean, we shouldn't really get into politics no, here, we're should not, we? Because no. it's possibly for the best we don't. Yes. Because so. by, by the time this podcast will have come out, the world may have exploded or something. <clears throat> well, we'll be on... Ed Davey will be Prime Minister. Oh. <laughs> and uh, all schools will have water slides by then. <laughs> I'm voting yes. for that, right? That sounds good to me. Right, um, so until we see you next time... Um, goodbye. Tatty bye. <laughs>